Dr. Schulman, the CDC estimates now that one in 88 children under the age of eight years old has some form of autism in the U.S. This is a 23% increase over just two years ago and a 78% increase since 2002. What's driving this spike? Whenever you see an increased prevalence, there's always two things to consider. One is, is the incidence of the condition increasing? Are there truly more children, more individuals with this diagnosis? Or are we doing a better job at recognizing it, identifying the symptoms and diagnosing children? Let's start with the second category. Certainly, we are doing a better job in that regard. There are the CDC's own efforts, Act Early, Learn the Signs, um, materials that are disseminated widely to teachers, medical providers, and families, empowering them to seek evaluation. There are materials that are directed directly at parents, Autism Speaks efforts, the commercials. One out of 150, your child's more likely to have autism than to be a prima ballerina. Um, there are the American Academy of Pediatrics efforts at early screening of children under 24 months of age. All of these things are definitely contributing to earlier recognition, more recognition, more referrals for ASD at every age. Um, it's as though the American population is, is primed. They're, they're ready to recognize signs of autism and they're doing a better job widely of referring children who are then getting diagnosis. Let's talk about the changing attitudes about ASD. You here at Einstein's Children's Evaluation and Rehabilitation Center routinely screen children and you're often personally the one that has to break the news to parents that their child has some form of autism but they're not reacting to parents as sharply as they once did. Tell us about that. Well, 10 years ago, when we gave a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, we were generally giving the diagnosis to a family who had never heard of the condition. Now, 10 years later, it's common for parents to come seeking the diagnosis. It's common for parents to come saying, I'm concerned my child has autism. So bottom line, in your experience, many parents would rather hear ASD than let's say mental retardation. Absolutely. They also know that ASD opens the door to services uh, and that parents recognize they've been taught, trained, that early services will impact on their child's outcomes. So they want the most services. The median age of diagnosis in this CDC study was four years old. You diagnose kids routinely here at an average of two years and two months. So that's really a huge difference. How much of a difference does it make, in your view, in terms of this early diagnosis in reg with regard to the progression of the child? You know, one of the main things about children with autism in general is that they don't learn as well casually. They don't learn as well from their environment, from their peers, from the household activities. They need to be taught. Those two years during prime learning time are, are vital. To, to lose those two years is, it's, it's a sin. This report looked at more than 300,000 children and the findings again were consistent. Boys about five times more likely than girls to develop some form of autism. Do we have any more understanding now, two years later, uh, since the last report, of why that is? Well, the first thing I would say, whenever you hear in any condition that boys are more commonly affected than girls, it brings to mind genetic causes. That's the usual explanation when you think of environmental exposures, for example. There's no reason why one sex would be affected more than the other. So it does bring to mind a genetic etiology for underlying many cases of autism spectrum disorder, certainly not all. In closing, what advice would you have for parents who are seeing their children exhibit signs but are still uh, almost frightened, immobilized uh, to, to do anything at this point? My recommendation would be to initiate a dialogue initially with your pediatrician. You can refer your child to early intervention. <clears throat> you can come to a diagnostic and treatment center like this, but get out of that frozen state and do something. Um, these are critical years. You don't want to miss them. And children can do well. So if you invest and can get beyond that frozen state, you're in a position to help your child have the best outcome possible.